and we are gonna get ourselves started. So once again, day one of home instruction. Oh, sorry, one sec. Before we begin, I am going to send you guys the link for the work that we're gonna be doing in class today. I'm um, just gonna be two seconds to pull that up. I'm also gonna post this in the YouTube video as well. Of course, my computer is being slow, but this is gonna be a Google form. I just want you to fill out the answers as we're going along. That's a way to help you stay accountable and encourage you to do this on a separate sheet of paper and a way so that I know who is actually doing the work and who maybe just puts their computer on and then walks away from it later. So, sorry, let me pull this up for us. This is gonna take a second longer than I was hoping it would. Sorry, everybody, for this short delay. Probably I shouldn't hit record yet. And, all right, awesome. Link is copied, come back to the PowerPoint here. Let me chat the link into everybody real quick. Excellent, that's the link. That's gonna have all the problems that we're doing together as a class as well. All right, let's get this show on the road. One more person. Excellent, so we have another friend joining us. Feel free to chat your name in as well. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be working on some algebraic, um, some algebraic problems. And we're gonna be solving mainly for x and other variables today. So we have our problem, 25, 0.5 equals four plus two X. What's my first step to solve this problem? What's something to chat in for me? What's gonna be my first step in order to solve this problem? How am I gonna solve this problem? What's my first step to isolate for X? How am I gonna solve for X here? Awesome, uh, why don't you send me a chat with what we need to do? Send me a uh, private chat with what we need to do. Let's see someone raise their hand. Give us five more seconds on this one. That can help us through it, if not. So how am I going to isolate my variable here? I wanna get this alone on this side of the equation and have a number over here. I wanna get in the form of x equals some number. All right, I'm just gonna give it to us now because I don't wanna to wait too long, but feel free to chat in anyway, is we're gonna isolate this variable by first eliminating our constant. Our constant here is the four. So we're gonna subtract four from both sides of our equation. We're gonna perform an inverse operation by subtracting four from both sides. We're gonna get 21.5 equals zero plus two X. And then our zero, we can get rid of that. So we're gonna get 21.5 equals two X. Now we need to solve for X. How am I gonna solve for X? Someone chatted in for me. How do we think we're gonna solve for X? Thanks so to how we can solve for x. What do we need to do to both sides of our equation? Excellent, I got an answer here. We're gonna divide both sides by two. Awesome job, thank you very much for chatting that in. And we're gonna get 10.75 is gonna be equal to x. When we divide by two, we get two over two x, which is the same as one x, which is the same as x. Excellent job. Um, that image who chatted that in, thank you very much. Great. Let's move on to our next problem. Our answer for this one is going to be 10.75. So we're gonna put that into the Google form and that's gonna be how I know that you were following the video and watching along and doing the work along with us. Next question is going to be very similar. This is gonna be a quick one. 4X plus two equals 14. How can I solve for X here? What do I need to do in order to solve for X? I need to first eliminate this constant, and am I going to add or subtract it from both sides of our equation? So we have another person. Please chat your name in, please, to the chat, so I know who you are. Excellent, we're gonna subtract two from both sides of our equation, we're performing an inverse operation. We're gonna get four X. Excellent, uh, the individual who just got here, please let me know what your name is. Oh, awesome, very glad to have you on the call. So we have four X equals 12, dividing both sides by four. And we're gonna get x equals three, and our answer here is just gonna be x equals three. Awesome, excellent job everybody who's been following along here, great work. We are gonna move through these very quickly, we'll get you out of here in no time. Better understanding of math than yesterday. Sorry, so we have one more chat, let me check that real quick. Uh, yes, there are, multiple, there are a couple other people here, however, some people earlier were not using the chat function appropriately, so I had to make it that you can only communicate with me and ask me questions and answer these questions with me. Uh, because I didn't want to have that happen again. So, however, we're still rocking and rolling here. So, this time we're solving for A. 
Do we think there's any difference between solving for A and solving for X if they are both variables? What do we think? Chat it to me. What do we think? What are we thinking on this one? No, exactly. There's not going to be any difference. We're going to solve for A the exact same way we'd solve for X. So we have 6 equals A over 4 plus 2. I can use this one as usual. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. We're going to eliminate our constant. We're going to get 4 equals A over 4. Now what are we going to do? We have this in a different form than usual. Normally, we have a number multiplied by X. But this time, we have X over a number. So what are we going to do here? How are we going to isolate for A? What do you think we should do? I think they can give me this one. Right, multiply by 4. We are going to multiply by 4 on both sides of our equation. I'll explain why in just a second. So multiply by 4. 4 times 4 is going to be 16 equals A. So the reason why we do this step, why we multiply by 4, is because A over 4 is the same as saying 1 fourth multiplied by A. These two are the exact same thing. And to eliminate this fraction here, we need to multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, this is an older word, reciprocal. We need to multiply this value by the reciprocal to eliminate it. So we're going to get 1 fourth times 4 gives us 4 over 4 times A, which is just 1A, which is just A. So that's when multiply both sides by 4 there. Awesome. Feeling pretty good about this. We might be able to skip one or two. We'll see as we go along. Look at our next one. I really like this problem too. So this problem says we're going to solve for R, which is the same thing as solving for A or X. Good question. Oh, sorry to see you go. Make sure you answer all the questions anyway, right? Have someone else. Awesome. See a couple of people popping in and out. I'd like you to stay for as long as you can. So we have negative 4 equals R over 20 minus 5. So let me answer this chat real quick. All righty. So we have minus 5 this time. Do we need to perform a different inverse operation than the last time if we're subtracting 5? Do we need to perform a different inverse operation if we are subtracting 5 from both side, um, from this side of the equation? So you got an answer here. Yes, we do. What is that operation going to be? I think we need to add, divide, multiply, or subtract 5 from both sides. Right, we're going to add 5 to both sides of our equation. So this is because we're performing the inverse operation. If we subtract, we want to add. If we add, we want to subtract. If we multiply, we want to divide. So that's why we're adding 5 to both sides of our equation. So we get 1 equals r over 20. And then just like last time, this is in the form of 1 equals 1 over 20 times r. So to get rid of our fraction, we're going to multiply both sides by 20 and get that 20 is equal to r. And that's going to be our answer to this one here, is r is going to equal 20. All righty. Um, I decided I'm actually going to skip this one for now. I don't love this problem, and I think we're going to do some more distributive property later. So feel free to answer this one on your own, or you can just put in a random number for it. Either way, we're going to work on this a little bit more later. I got a little, got a little too excited when I was making this worksheet for us. I decided I'd put up more than I could shoot for today. But I do want to have us tackle this inequality problem here. So an inequality. How is an inequality different than an equation sign? How is an inequality different than an equation sign? How are these two different? Can someone chat in for me how they're different? Give some like 30 seconds here to chat in how an equation and an inequality are different. Um, All right. I guess we're not totally sure about that. I know it's been a while since we worked on these, so I can give a little bit of an explanation. In an equation, there's only going to be one value for x. In an equation, there's only going to be one value for x. And as we saw, that was x equals 5, x equals 20, x equals negative 10. Whatever value is, that's the only value that's going to work. 
But for an inequality, we can have a range of values that work. It could be x is greater than 10. So all values greater than 10 will satisfy the inequality, or all values less than 10 will satisfy our inequality. Things like that. Oh, excellent. We have an answer. The equal sign equals the answer. The equality sign of the answer is bigger or less than the answer. Perfect answer there. Exactly what I wanted to hear. You actually got the explanation more articulately and precise than I did, so excellent job. So let's solve our inequality here. We're still going to solve it the same way, but our answer is going to be in a range of values. So we have 2x plus 4 is going to be greater than 24. To solve for x, we're going to subtract 4 from both sides of our equation. We're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to get 2x is greater than 20. Now, when I divide both sides by 2, do I need to flip my inequality? Do I need to flip my inequality if I divide both sides by positive 2? What do we think? Do I need to flip the inequality? Excellent answer. No, because it's not a negative number. Perfect. So our final answer is going to be x is greater than 10. So if you create a number line, our answer is going to be an open circle on 10. It's going to include all values greater than 10. So we can check that by plugging, finding a number greater than 10. Let's do x equals 20. Let's check our answer. So we're going to get 2 times 20 plus 4 is greater than 24. 2 times 20 is going to give us 40 plus 4 is greater than 24. We get 44 is greater than 24. And we are exactly correct. All values greater than 20 are going to give us our answer there. Um, yeah, let's do this one too. I like this problem. This is going to be our last one for today. And then you guys are, <clears throat> excuse me, free for the rest of the day and evening and until tomorrow. So we're going to solve for B. Once again, we have an inequality symbol here. So we're going to set up the same way. Negative B minus 2 is greater than 8. As usual, we eliminate our constant. We're going to add 2 to both sides of our inequality. Remember, it's an inverse operation, so we need to add 2. We get negative b is greater than 8. So how are we going to solve for b? We have a negative b is greater than 8, but we're looking for what b is. So how are we going to solve for b? What are we going to do? Give us 30 seconds. How are we going to solve for b? I'll send in the chat, too. Oh, my mistake. I did make a mistake. Good catch that individu uh, individual. B is going to be greater than 10. Very good catch. Thank you for correcting me. But once again, how will we solve for B? Thank you very much for correcting me. Give us 15 more seconds to try to answer this one. Just need one step for us. See, so we're not sure. That's A-OK. No worries. Multiply both sides by 10. Not quite. I can walk us through it here. It's no problem. We're going to divide both sides by negative 1. We're going to divide both sides by negative 1. So negative B is really the same as saying negative 1 times b. So our inverse operation is going to be to divide both sides by negative 1 to get rid of our negative. Dividing both sides by negative 1 in order to get rid of that negative. If we do that here, these would cancel out. We would just get b. So we're going to get b. We're going to get negative 10 over here. And is our inequality symbol going to flip? Is our inequality symbol going to flip? Excellent. Perfect answer. Yes, because it is a negative number, so that's going to switch. So our answer is going to be b is less than negative 10. So we take negative 10. Get an open circle here. It's going to be all values less than negative 10. Not going to bother to check that one for right now. Alrighty, thank you very much, everybody. Going to turn off uh, the recording in a second, but um, yeah, make sure you get this form filled out. I'll chat in the homework as well. Make sure we're spending a little bit of time on that tonight. Let's do it at 8 a.m. tomorrow, and I will see everybody tomorrow in the Zoom session. They're at 9 a.m., 12:30, and 6 o'clock.